Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And this week, Steam has finally added support for high DPI displays, and I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, kids. It don't work. And Vulcan inhales some helium. So we're going to find out how well it plays with Unreal Engine 4. Vermintide isn't coming to Linux. Oh, rats. And Super Tux Cart snaps. But hey, at least they have some network multiplayer. Rust is leaving early access and going into alpha. I, I, I can't even. And Battle Chasers gets a Linux. It's only a beta branch, though. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, all under Linux, joined every week by our um, Canadian Toronto Bureau Chief, one master spur, and you know him, you love him from Britannia, the Portuguese man of war himself, Hello. Pedro Mateus, together with Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Anything new with Pedro other than um, not getting paid? I heard you didn't get paid, son. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Get, it was my fault. I fucked up. When I moved to the permanent <laughs> position, I uh, <laughs> I put in the wrong sort code for my bank. So, yeah, now I got to fix that. And hopefully they'll pay me over the coming week. Hopefully. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm poor. Still poor. <laughs> What's up, Jay, baby? Uh, not much. I ended up playing some uh, speedrunners yesterday against someone who actually knew how to play. Ooh. This was in person, and oh yeah, it's like oh fuck. I got him a couple times, but yeah, one if 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 you if you know all the all the good strats about all like this the tricky grappling shit, then you will you'll just win every. Yeah, time. man. I remember playing kind when of, we were playing of, um rel regularly ish, yeah. and I thought I was good. I played a random yeah. online. And he was stopping and waiting for over a minute at some point. Yeah, no, apparently that's just like a thing in the competitive scene. Like, apparently they're just super good sports. Mm -hmm. So, nice, friendly people. Um, not much here. I, I made a muff for, for the microphone because I'm having a hard time spending $250 on that aisle. Um, did that, made some wicked bad soup unintentionally, boiled some cabbage, food cast, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to share this. You, you know what a stink bug is, right? When I say stink bug, that little fucked up bug, right? That yeah. if you smash yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't. I, I'd seen them before, and I never noticed until I had one attack me um, a couple of months back, and I swatted at it, and I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I didn't even smash it. I just swatted it off. Well, turns out at the bottom of my cabbage soup was one of those little fucking bugs that somehow flew in there, <laughs> and I bit right into it. So if you Ooh. think they smell bad, just imagine the taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, that's, a, that's some stink bug goulash right there it, it was pretty brutal for about an hour man and there's nothing and i repeat nothing kids it gets that out of your face but we need to put the horse into their face for another week yeah it, it's quite the palate cleanser i mean it's fermented it's rotting it's like an aged steak it's the steam linux Update of the week. Oh, here we go, boys. It's it's another sale. There's one every month. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's the it's the Lunar New Year sale. So Gung Hei Gung Hei Fachoi, whatever. I, I probably butchered that. If you're if you're into the Chinese Lunar New Year, I think it's the year of the dog. It's the year of the <laughs> up dog now. Um, and um, yeah, the 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 so uh, that. The, the next sale is going to be coming up uh, in the Februarys. Um, went February 15th to February 19th. And you know you know what they say. When everything's on sale, nothing is. And I'm pretty sure they, they've set this up now where, I don't know, maybe maybe they host the shit in Amazon so they have it trained so whenever they have a sale, they just spin up a bunch of new infrastructure so they can just support all the, um, all the additional purchases. Because it's like some Pavlovian thing, right? They ring the bell and then everyone just buys games. Well, this is true. I mean, even it's been close enough and recent enough that, you know, oh, big Steam sale, Venture sale, or something like that, it would get kind of crawly um, at the Steam store and its Steam store outage. You just assumed it was part of life. The last two? Not, not so much, Pedro. Not so much. Nope. Uh, there was uh, at one point the Steam market and the Steam community side of the client were throwing up for 503 errors, but uh, no, the store itself kept running. 
So yeah, either people are not going to the store as much, or they're just pawning off the uh, the trading cards that they get from the games. I don't know. It's it's a Steam sale. They happen a lot. Uh, basically, just wait for any sale to come up so you can get games on the cheap. And yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like yeah, the, 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 there's been a lot of sales lately. Sale. And yeah. it's not so much that it's an event these days. It's it's okay. Is there anything on my wish list that's on sale? Oh, it's only thirteen mm-hmm. percent. I'll wait for the next sale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of hey, comes patient, down. Yeah. gamers, man. <laughs> so Steam gave us a little bit of a gift, man, and that gift came in the form of a beta client update. And it's like, oh, 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 what's the big deal? Well, Windows got high DPI monitor support. Linux got a two X scaling mode. That on my end is busted. Um, you can force 2x scaling. You can disable it. You know, you just want to edit the Steam bin file, which I had to do. Improve window resizing interaction. Also, didn't notice a difference there. That still took, you know, a billion years to um, resize that. Reduce CPU usage. Redrawing the UI. Yet, uh, I, I was excited about this, Jordan. Because I have a UHD monitor at 3840 by 2160 much like you. I launched this, and it made everything, A, way too big, because your options, nothing or 2x. And anytime I tried to open up an options menu, which spawned a new window, not only did it go into the far bottom right-hand corner of my UHD display, it went further where I could only see, like, the top quarter of it, and it wouldn't let me reposition it. It would snap back to... uh Slim yeah, down. ever ever since that issue where I uh, had to create a new Steam account to log into my old Steam account because of the beta update, I've been I've been staying away from the beta <laughs> updates. Just may, may, maybe maybe I'll have a better experience. I didn't I didn't I didn't try this out. I do like though that they're they're actively addressing some of the Vulcan issues with the Steam overlay because that's always been a pain point, and it's it's just, it's mm-hmm. it's a weird little middleware application that has a lot of utility, but it introduces so many other complications. But I do. Oh, but yes. I just keep it on, just because I like the ability to alt tab out of the game when the game doesn't let, want you to do that. Right. And yeah. the only the other uh, thing they did for Linux was they fixed an issue where the Steam client would prevent some, and by some they mean all, desktop sessions from shutting down. Uh, yeah, that's one of the issues that I keep bringing up whenever there's an update to the Steam client. That's one of them fixed. Good on you, Valve. It actually works. It actually closes the Steam client gracefully when you tell the system to shut down, and the system shuts down. It only took you a couple of years, Valve. But uh, there's I've still the issue of the overlay. Oh, that problem's real, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe it's an Ubuntu thing, because like, I just do power off, do systems off. The, th- the thing, the thing uh, yeah, that holds it up is trying to off. unregister NFS shares. Uh, if you do power off from the terminal, it will shut down because it just kills Steam. It doesn't exit gracefully. Mm-hmm. But if you are actually using your desktop environment's shutdown option, which is usually just shut down, uh, then it hangs up because it actively stops the system from shutting down and it hogs the shutdown command. It doesn't do that anymore. They fix that. Just good. Now they just need to fix the overlay uh, freezing games, the holding the shift key hostage until you go in and you hit shift a couple of times to let it go. Yeah, that needs to be fixed still. Yeah, I, I didn't have any faith that they'd fix the shutdown bug on the Ubuntu on 17.10 with a regular client. That's still an issue, even with XFCE. And I didn't have enough faith in it to the point to where shortly after that, I was, would you like to restore your browsing session? Chrome didn't close down cleanly because I was like, this thing, mm. would, I'm just going to hit shutdown and it'll freeze like it normally. Nope. System yeah. powered off. They, they fixed yeah. it. I'm gonna say good yeah. on that business. Right, well, yeah. Indeed. So let's move on to someone who saw the Steam link and thought this is way too compact and way too neat for you to shove in a drawer somewhere and just let it run and just change the HDMI uh, input whenever you want to play a game. Well, they said, well, no more. I shall build me an arcade cabinet off of the Steam Link. And, well, he did. Kudos to him. He actually did. He got all the wood. Uh, he bought some um, fighting sticks, USB fighting sticks, and mounted them to the uh, 
the woody bits, what he made. Uh, he's also, he doesn't go into a lot of detail of what he actually had to do. But well, I'll go ahead and tell you pictures. this is he's clearly single because you do not get away with that in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you have some leverage but <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. no it works uh he also created some uh light effects with the led strips so when the steam link comes on it see it does a little intro animation at the bottom of the cabinet and then it stays lit up uh it looks really nice and i mean he's probably still streaming from windows but it, it, it's something you can do with your Link. I well, guess. I think importantly to look at it is it's something you can do with your link that I went, ah, shit, I'd never thought of that. All right. Okay. Then almost. Yeah, a little, a little dumb terminal. Yeah, dumb terminal for your games and yeah. you, you, what are you, a power cable. That saves you a lot right there, especially coming in over the Wi-Fi's. Mm -hmm. But um, almost made me wish I'd picked up a link when they were three ninety nine on the holiday sale. <laughs> almost. But mm, then again. Jordan, um, Val Valve's kind of being an asshat with this whole Australian lawsuit thing, buddy. Yeah, it's like they really don't want to pay. So it's from Gamma Sutra. Links to all oh, this is in our show notes. We we just talk about this every once in a while, just because it's fun to laugh at Valve. You're like, Haha, you 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 lost the lawsuit. Now you're not going to pay, and then you're probably going to get fired by the government. and You're still not going to pay, and then Foxy's not going to be able to play Rocket League. And that's the that's the story of how Australia <laughs> died. The end. Um, no, the, um, uh, Val Valve is appealing the 24 million fine for uh, not having a proper refund policy on, uh, Steam for the longest time they have one now, but you know, Ozzy's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta pay up, man. You, you didn't, you broke our laws, so you gotta pay the consequences. Uh, Valve's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, they're going to find it, yeah, man. Uh, basically, well, well yeah. I, dude, it's like, listen, I, I could understand if, Valve was a publicly traded company, then they'd have the fiduciary uh, responsibility to their stockholders to at least try mm -hmm. to fight this. Valve, Valve's a private company. It's Gaben. Gaben's just kind of being a dick is what it feels like. A hundred, hundred percent. Yeah. And I mean, the, the Australian government wants to set that precedent so that, you know, when this stuff happens in the future, yeah. other companies will have to pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, kind of sad to see that because, yeah, Valve, you, you goofed, man. They got laws, they changed them, and you get, get play nice, nice, man. You're, you're just wasting time. But, hey, it's not like they're yeah, developing I, games, right? <laughs> not anytime soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's well, I, I mean, what if that, they, they teased that artifact a while ago. But, yeah, Vermintide, it's a Warhammer game, and it's one of the odd Warhammer games, I think, other than Fire Warrior. What, who, yeah, who remembers that one for the PlayStation 2? Anyways, um, that are not coming to Linux. Uh, Thumbtack Jake in the, uh, or rather, yeah, Thumbtack Jake in the uh, forums there asked the question. Oh, again, Steam support. And Hedge, uh, one of the developers from Fat Shark, says no immediate plans to support Linux. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Uh, and no, and remember, no immediate means either uh, there's some NDA or until we need the money. Ah, this makes me so stabby, though, because this is a Warhammer game. It's like, oh, it's first person, it's stabby, it's actually it's shooty, I want to play. Of course, it's not coming to Linux. And it's a bit more than that. This is Left for Bread in Warhammer. I want me some of that so goddamn bad. Just come on, bring it over. And come it's, on. It's just coming soon, too, so it's... Ah, ah, boo. Boo earns. Yeah, boo. Boomerans. Indeed. Maybe oh, maybe well. maybe though if they go bankrupt, we'll see a Linux port. Like, hey, let's do some hey do, do you think it? it'll um maybe we'll get a Linux port before Rust exits early access, or are we gonna have to get rid of that joke? Uh, I think we're gonna have to get rid of that joke. Well, at least on the official title anyway, because uh this uh, article uh showed up on PC Gamer a while back, five days ago. Uh and it's very uh, appropriately titled. Rust will leave early access in February, but it's not finished yet. And, well, honestly, why are they leaving early access? The game is nowhere near done. Uh, much like when I tried the game, uh, I went into a server, I got 18 frames per second on the 1080 and the um, Ryzen 5 1600, 
And I said, you know what? No. So uh, they do say that, uh, what was it? Uh, was it actually uh, Gary Newman himself that said, think of it more like leaving prototyping and entering alpha? Yeah, Fuck man, you. that was straight yeah, up Gary no, that, Gary that, saying, that. Um, <laughs> "Fuck it, I I do what I want." Drops Mike and walks out. Pretty, man. Pre, 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 pretty much, Gary Gary's never really been in the business of uh, making well performing games, just fuck around ones. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the whole leaving prototyping and entering alpha to me that just left a nasty fucking taste in my mouth. That that's totally yeah. No, I, you can't criticize it because it's not done. This was this was me fucking around it's not like i actually had a playable game that i was selling for money yeah <laughs> no, I, I no, know, no, no 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 that, that was that was that was r&d now we're actually going to start doing an alpha Ugh, fuck you man mm-hmm. thanks for so the copy they're rest, leaving the, the early access they're leaving the early access moniker behind so they can avoid the stigma that's attached to it nowadays and hope that more people will buy the game they think oh now it's finished i'm gonna buy the game and then they get in the game and you just get a refund Eh, that's what's yeah, going this to happen. is also true, and we we've seen a lot of these with the arc and everything else. But it, unless you rename it to PUBG and um, PUBG with like a little G or something, you, fuck it, man. It's it's baked. Yes, I know there's a community for it's it. Pub Gary, Pub Gary, <laughs> whatever it's, you want to call it. It, it, it. It's Pab. It's PUBG. PUBG. Oh man, Pab Smear. That's uh, right. really what you should call it. Um, <laughs> Unreal Engine Four and Vulcan, gentlemen. Two things that we've not seen dwell in the same house. Uh, might be it something. Makes my voice want to go all high pitch. Hey man, uh, Steve O from Chat Real, he <laughs> pointed this out because he's got Indeed. access to the show notes as a patron. And uh, yeah, man, they're just doing some things. Helium Rain doesn't look like my kind of jam for a game. Personally, I'm interested in this one simply for the technical merits of it but one of the big things in this update is better linux support and i said we've been working on getting helium rain to use the latest unreal engine version good perks of this release include the vulcan support and a new audio peep line so yeah i'm i'm uh, again good. i'm happy about it don't know More. much about the game <laughs> outside of i just looked at a screenshot of it and i was like yeah don't 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 really know man yeah, if it if yeah, it's it not going to be like sheepy fighty instead of a uh, Excel spreadsheet simulator uh, that mm-hmm. it looks like from the screenshots. Yeah, I'd probably pick it up, but uh, yeah, no, it's this is good. Make no mistake, I want all the Unreal Engine four games uh, on the Steam Store to support Vulcan. So then developers have to come up with new and interesting excuses not to support Linux. Mm. See what I what I would really like to see though is this run like beautifully, and then we can point to something to be like, yeah, yeah, these fuckers did it. Why don't you, you stupid son of a bitch? Hey man, I mean the third way you That's... can look at that is because the Vulcan titles that not the Vulcan titles, Unreal Engine Four. I'm thinking about Descent, and I'm thinking about Observer. They both ran like poo, and maybe Vulcan is mm-hmm. going to be the solution. To developers can be like, okay, there's a legitimate way to actually get something that smells remotely like performance under linux yeah yeah and also say, and also you only gotta write that, it once uh, enabling the experimental vulcan renderer mm-hmm. which uh they admit is somewhat slower but it's more reliable especially if you have amd graphics hmm. yeah <laughs> jordan your favorite game Seem, g- got a hold of your favorite sport <gasps> and they, they had sex yeah <laughs> well that was that was that was weird I got I got so mad I dropped out of uh, wire for a second there. No, this this is this fucking golf with friends. They have their shitty one dot oh one oh five update. Um, they they have some uh, new m- lo- menu for multi level or level mode selection. And oh oh fuck, they have a hockey mode now. Seriously, mm-hmm. seriously. Yep. Hey man, uh, well, and, wait and, uh, wait fire, wait fire, wait. Fire, the fire. fuck's your problem? Well, I thought maybe you would stand a, a fighting chance, you know, with your Canadian blood. You've seen me play rocket hockey, right? They, <laughs> yes, which is, it has nothing to do with Canadian blood. Uh, yeah, I the driving bottle is Canadian immediately blood. associated it's, to it's, Canadians. It's, it's refreshing. Yeah, well, also you can't drive. So. It's it's. it's uh, <laughs> yeah I, I, I can still drive you crazy though oh, man. Why, why don't you uh, uh, dr- yeah. drive me with the stroking uh, game I'm, 
Oh yeah, no, it's I'm not gonna have a stroke in a minute. This is Basing Stroke. Uh, it is a roguelike Stoke. survival game with an emphasis on stealth because you only have one hit point, and if you get hit, you die. So surprise, surprise on that. So you gotta you gotta scout out, plan little traps, and lure people, little monsters to their deaths. Um, honestly, with games like these, it could go either way. This could be like really fun, have like really interesting and compelling stealth mechanics and gameplay, or it could just mm -hmm. be boring and frustrating. That that's there, there's no there's no middle ground. It's either one or the other with these sorts of roguelikes. Hmm. Yeah, and it's also got crafting elements, which I don't think it uh, blends well with the whole roguelike thing and its inherent randomness. So. Remains to be seen, I guess, but I will probably uh, at least shoot them an email, see if they'll give us some keys. Might be something to play around with. Uh, this other game, I'd never really heard of it, but apparently a lot of people like it, Pedro. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, I am one of those people. Uh, this is uh, Battle Chasers, and up until now, we've all seen the uh, Linux threads, and they have a pretty big one on their Steam forum. And now the lead programmer, Hooper, came out and said, we have a test branch ready to try for Linux users. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so if you own the game, if you already have it for some reason, just uh, right click uh, in the Steam library, go to properties, go to the betas tab, choose Linux test from the drop down and you're off to the races. Uh, there's only been two people or so in the thread in their actual forums that have uh, tried it. Apparently it works. It works with the Xbox 360 wireless and wired controllers. So they're using LibSDL2. Chances are anything you got going on will work. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's the smart thing to do is use SDL2 for your yeah. port or just for your game in general because it will make your life so much easier. And then when you have to port it to another platform like Linux, SteamOS, the Switch, whatever, lo and behold, mm -hmm. make, target, Switch, Linux, whatever. Boom, you got yourself a <laughs> working game. And like, here's the thing, there's not a lot of JRPG style games on Linux. It, it, in, P, in, in the PC space in general, it's not particularly well represented because mm -hmm. most Japanese people, the core market for JRPGs, are not using PC or Linux or anything like that for that matter. So it's good that we have some yeah. variety in our game types and hopefully this doesn't run like a complete butt because I would be interested in playing this. Yeah, it's a bit, it it's a bit pricey. Yeah, $29.99. It's listed for uh, 20 It is. Yeah, mm. 20, 25, 25 pounds in the UK. That's a uh, that's spicy yeah. meatball. Maybe mm. maybe it'll go on sale. Who knows? Could be a thing. Um, But this is... This is this is uh this next one's a uh, Metroidvania that's been getting quite a bit of uh, press lately. Iconoclasts. I yeah, love that Symphony a X lot, album. actually. Uh, I saw, I saw it come up on Steam, and then it's like, oh, okay, I've never heard of this game. So I did a quick Google search, and there were a bunch of articles saying, oh, this game is amazing. Oh, this game is really good. Oh, this game this and this game that. Okay, all right. So, um, well, it's Iconoclasts. Uh, it is a Metroidvania, like Jordan already mentioned, and I am always on the lookout for Metroidvanias nowadays, especially since Salt and Sanctuary came out, because I'm looking for the next hit. I especially like the games that fit more on the Vania side of the Metroidvania subgenre. Uh, and this actually does look like it'll fit more on the Metroid side. I hope I'm wrong, because I tend to prefer the Vania bits. Uh. I don't know, man. I might like it. It's not stupid priced. Uh, it's nineteen ninety nine. It looks like it was uh, made by a single person, which we'll be getting more into that in the review section. But um, yeah, I, I we'll see. We'll see because yeah, I'm with you. It if it's could more be Metroid Alloy level, good. Yeah, if it, <laughs> definitely. If it's more Metroid than Castlevania, because Castlevania just never um, wet my pickle, you know. Yeah, and uh, especially mm -hmm. like the Symphony of the Night stuff, stuff type stuff. It reminds me a lot of like it. It looks like it's borrowing some Mega Man aesthetics too. So maybe there's a little bit of that style of gameplay in there as well. Um, for twenty to twenty bucks, it's reasonably priced. Maybe, maybe we'll throw some chairs at it. But how about how about we engage in a bit of our masochistic tendencies? This is masochized. Uh, it's a one man game by uh, Mr. Alex Horatio. 
It's coming spoon, February 2nd. And mm -hmm. it is a game where you kill aliens, and then periodically you get asked how these aliens should be able to better kill you. And then you have to fight them and rinse repeat forever and ever. He says it's fun. Trust him. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Uh, there's also talk of a demo, so you might be able to try it out once he uh, gets that shit together and releases it. And yeah, yeah. again, it's one of those things where like it could have really solid gameplay or it could just be hot garbage. You don't know until you try it out. Well, you uh, you could actually try it because the developer was kind enough to send us some keys over the Curator Connect thing. So chances are we will probably be having a look at it to I really like these system requirements. Additional notes, you probably won't run into dependency errors, but if you do, make sure you have Mesa GL, also Pulse Audio, and just in some cases, open SSL. Uh, do you, do, do, uh, it, so is there a distribution that doesn't ship with open SSL? No, it, it might be one of those things where it's like, oh, if you, we're, we're, we're shipping with some ancient version of open SSL that is just garbage and you might fuck up. I don't know. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like his other note. It's a 2D uh, game without too many fancy effects. You're probably fine if you're using a computer built in the last five years. All right. Thing. Sounds legit. All right, we all got right. one more before we get out of here. Indeed. And this is a teeny tiny one. It's Star Wars Rogue. You may remember we threw chairs at that game a while back. It's developed by Arkan Games, and I learned the pronunciation of that from the, uh, the email I got because they have A-R-K-E-N in parentheses after the name of the company. But yeah, they sent me, and I'm assuming they also sent you guys some keys for the DLC. And it is a significant DLC. It's got 125 new rooms, 30 new enemies, 90 new items. Uh, it's got a few new mechs and a bunch of bosses and mini bosses as well. So good on them. It's good to know that Arkham Games is still kicking. And... I love Bionic Dews back in 2013. Uh, this one, even though it reuses most of the same assets, it was always, I don't know, I, I, I found it a bit boring when we threw it, chairs at it. It's a shared, it's a shared fictional, fictional universe. Red, they're cheap. Uh, no, but <laughs> seven bucks for a content pad is well within the realm of reasonability. And it's a pretty decent sized uh, contact mm -hmm. pack as well. And they have a bundle as well. So if you haven't picked up uh, Star Wars Rogue, want to pick it up, you can get it on sale for a buck more with everything than you would uh, pay for the uh, just the expansion. So that's that's a nice little touch. Yeah, I mean, true, true on that. Um, I I don't know, man. This DLC feels like it w would program someone to feel pain because really that's all I fucking remember about that game. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Lie to you. Yeah, why, why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> oh, all right. Good. Take us uh, out of here. The pain though. continues, though. Yeah, pain continues, though, in the news segment where we are going to talk about lawyer biz because we are the best armchair lawyers. Well, it's the news. And to break tradition a little bit, nah, just kidding. We're going to be whoring ourselves out for a little bit. So stay, you know, stay tuned. We'll get around to some Linuxy news in just a moment. But first, we have to appreciate... All y'all who keep making this insanity, Saturday Night Insanity, possible. Thank you. I wouldn't be up this That's right. for you. That's Shilling... right. <laughs> Shilling begins now. You can support this nightmare fuel by heading on over to linuxgamecast.com. Click the support the shows and button. Oh my god, there are Amazon affiliate links. There are Humble affiliate links. There's New Eggs affiliate links. Listen, if you're going to buy something online, we've pretty much got an affiliate link for it. So give us some support just by buying stuff that you normally do. It's awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about a way you can do that very, very shortly. You can also give us Bitcoin, give us PayPal donations. Just click on some links and enter your credit card number, and hopefully hopefully at some point the money will make it to our accounts. You can also head on over to patreon.com slash linuxgamecast, where we got wonderful, wonderful goodies for you, but hidden behind a paywall. Uh, we got, what, 203 Patreons giving us a good amount of money? Uh, I don't have the page up, so... Someone will give me the number at Look some at point. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, you're, you're, get... you're not even counting, man. We got 113 patrons kicking us. 224 wet, stinky cash is blowing our face off, keeping us ad free, independent, and all that. And they get some wicked cool stuff in return. They get the custom RSS feed. They get a show nobody else gets early access to Left for Bread and all this other fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for doing that. If you've been thinking about being a patron, it's a good time to do it because we're about to throw a new goal in. That damn well might smash off your 
face. We all got a we got a wish zone too. If you want on Amazon, uh, that business you can get on Frank's fuck wall. It's kind of brilliant. But but my favorite part is thanking our new patrons. Or if you've increased your pledge, Jordan, if you've increased your pledge, we might might say a yeah, few no. words about you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe Mr. Scott Michaud and his uh, very, very lovely sister have increased their pledge to give us some more money. <laughs> uh, we got a new uh, supporter in the form of uh, Freedom Penguin. She's Jordan. Come and on. We got, uh... <laughs> Listen, she's a nice lady. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that That's it. And of course, uh, we got some, okay, okay, every, occasionally every once in a while, someone can't make can't pay the bills. It's fine. Uh, we, we do not demand your support. We just merely appreciate it. And Mr. Grayson has come back with uh, some additional support. So thank you very much for that. This entire thing is not possible without you. We put out a lot of content just to sate your never ending thirst. Please, please release us from our bonds before we die. Oh God. Okay. So coming, coming up on uh, giving us money cast, um, you can click on our humble affiliate link and maybe take a look at the humble paradox bundle. Uh, where there are a number of games and a couple of good ones that you can yoink for uh, 12 bucks. You can grab um, Cities of Motion, Magicka 2, Majesty 2, Crusader Kings 2 with the Old Gods DLC, Pillars of Eternity, Hearts of Iron, which is not on uh, the Linux, neither is Europa Universalis, but if you pay 12 bucks, you get Stellaris. And I will say that between Stellaris and Pillars of Eternity for 12 bucks, that's a pretty good yoink right there. So I would definitely check that out. Uh, Magicka 2 yeah. is also pretty decent. That's so, the one I'm definitely going to throw there's, there's in some there. Is, value um, in this bundle. Magicka 2 is the one I didn't have. I, I was bouncing around. I was like, dude, dude, dude Magicka 2. I gave him five bucks for it because I thought it'd be kind of fun because it's multiplayer. We, we can definitely do that on one of our Tuesday or Thursday live streams. And mm -hmm. uh, that looks mm -hmm. good. Outside of that, it was a mixture of, I eh, don't want it versus, already get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a pretty good, I uh, may game. get it. If I get paid in time to uh, <laughs> uh, to actually catch the bundle, but yeah, no, it's uh, really all I want is Solaris. That's the one I don't have. So yeah. Hmm. So moving on, uh, Crytek's back at it. They threw the ball back in the direction of Star Citizen, where they're having it's just a little BS legal spat. If you don't know, uh, quick summary. Brightech originally said brand all this when you're making Star Citizen and we'll work out and like hook us up with bug reports and all that. Star Citizen, they kind of did it in the beginning. Then they're like, you know what? We're going to use this other engine, Lumberyard, which is basically a spooled off version with Crytek engine. And the lads at Crytek got a little pissy about it. And they're like, but you promised to do this and you promised to do it. There's the word promise in like the dock from the court it's like promise is made to be broken brad hate to break that to you and it looks like from reading this that they want seventy five thousand dollars to call it like yo that's what you post legal stuff which makes it look uh, to me a little bit worse it's like that's all the money you guys want what you just try to get a check uh, what's the deal here pedro well, they also account for the lost, the possible lost revenue from, you know, they were supposed to contribute back patches and optimizations that they made to the Crytek engine. Uh, and uh, in return, they would get the Crytek license for a lower fee. But they never did that. And so they, I guess, Crytek is actually just banking on the possible re lost revenue to translate into a significant number because yeah those 75,000 for uh what is basically a breach of contract that's not much but mm. hey it's the slap fight and it's uh it's here it's not going anywhere and this is the motion to dismiss that uh, Robert Space Industries put through uh because they said that the um no they yeah, uh, Robert Space Industries filed a motion to dismiss. That was last week. Now Crytek says that the motion is meritless. So yeah, this isn't going anywhere anytime soon. No, it, it, unless the judge what throws really, it out. I don't know, man. I, I mean, it really, really seems like Crytek just wants people to use their goddamn engine. And I don't think this is going to help them all that much because this just sends a clear message to developers. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you partner with us, and then, for whatever reason, you change your mind, we're going to sue you. Which says to most developers, just hey, like maybe that. I shouldn't <laughs> partner with the people who will stab me in the back. 
But I mean, they raised some good points at some point. If I, again, without really seeing what the contract says, no one can make any real assertion of or assertion of what is actually being breached. Um, I think this is just Crytek holding a little hissy fit. And like Ben said, 75,000 is chump change mm-hmm. like, for a company like uh, mm-hmm. Crytek. That doesn't seem like a lot of money. This seems like it may, maybe CryEngine is going for the principle of it. But again, no, no one's going to use their stuff anymore. Nope. This, this is the thanks that mm-hmm. developers will get. Coming up next, Threadripper Rip Reset Patch. We're talking about it because on Threadripper, um, formerly when you pass through any GPU to a virtual machine on Linux, you wouldn't be able to gracefully shut down the VM. Guess what? This patch sorts that issue. So now you can play your Windows games in Linux and something. I don't know, Pedro. People in actually Windows. play. Yeah. That is, that's primarily what we would be using. Um, well, I guess other people would be I don't know anything about this. I just know the sorts it, and I knew it was an issue with Threadripper, so I wanted to tell the beautiful people at home that here's your solution. I I don't know how you would even, why? why? What, what's wrong with people? But, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But fact of the matter is, there are a lot of people out there, especially if you go to Linux underscore gaming, it's like, how do I v- a PCIe pass through, brah? Uh, and well, if you had, if you bought a, um, a Threadripper processor for your desktop, why? But let's say you did and you wanted to do that PCIe pass-through. Why? But let's say you did that too. And then you started to run into issues. Well, those issues were caused because Threadripper, you know, kudos to AMD for this one, because Threadripper was actually following the PCIe spec to the letter. And there's a bug in the Linux kernel. <laughs> Uh, if you are following the PCIe spec to the letter, because the way that Intel does, the way that uh, everything goes through PCIe through an Intel Intel chipset, uh, the way that does it, it's handled. It seems to be handled mostly in firmware, and so the um, the kernel just assumed, oh, okay, so that device is now done. We don't need to do anything else with it. It just assumes that it works. In Threadripper, it's not working. So this patch actually resets the state as it should and now it works remains to be seen if it'll be merged at some point to the kernel proper but i hope so i really really do hope so so jordan when you buy that thread ripper box are you going to use this so uh, i actually i actually wanted to take a second and address the why question because both of you asked this the the sheer number of times i hear why don't you just run windows and then just run linux in a virtual machine the the number of times i hear that question astounds me i don't want to use windows period but if i have to then i don't want to have to reboot my computer i don't want to dual boot i would rather on quite honestly have it in a virtual machine Maybe have a dedicated GPU that occasionally gets used for the Windows virtual machine if I would if I would need to play a game in this hypothetical scenario. Need to need to and play a game. Be, <laughs> listen, listen, man, Dragon Dragon Ball Fighter Z is just calling me. I I need I need to I need to air juggle people as I don't know Kid Boo. What 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 whatever. The 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 fact of the matter is, if you don't want to mess with Lion, you can use this. Blah blah blah. You would buy if you wanted to. And to answer Pedro's question, why would you buy a Threadripper for your desktop? Well, if you're going to be virtualizing an entire other operating system with a dedicated GPU, you might want to buy the CPU with a fuck ton of cores, so you can run both and have an approximately equal level performance on either machine. But it's good to see that being sorted. It's good on AMD for actually following specs of the letter. I hate it, hate it, hate it when it's always like when it gets uncovered that oh there's some hack just because no one wanted to follow the actual spec and that's causing problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that that actually comes up quite a bit under Linux too, where especially for like new uh, TCP extensions, um, Linux will implement it to the st- spec, and then they'll find an issue with the spec and be like oh no Linux is broken. No, they just followed the paper and the paper was wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, you know, maybe, maybe maybe when you're having many, many, maybe you can't afford to have GPUs. Maybe you're, um, maybe the Bitcoin miners have bought all them, all of them out in your area and you mm-hmm. want to test your game with the, with the Vulcans on a couple different cards. What are you going to do? Well, uh, previously you would be stuck with the whole, oh, uh, maybe I'll just, uh, pop down to, I don't know, eBay, buy one that's been run to the ground from all the mining. But the fine folks at Lunar G, they put out a free tool that uh, 
will allow you to validate your Vulkan application in a multitude of quote-unquote virtual GPUs. And basically what this does is it grabs all the information that um, the Kronos group has been collecting from all the devices that have passed certification. And from there, they build their own... They actually have a pretty good description of how it works. It's got a little lot of code, but uh, it's... It's really neat because they have uh, in the internal data tables from the underlying GPU, and then they put their virtual data tables on top of that to tell the application, no, it's using this GPU, and this GPU has this hardware, and it pulls these calls like this, and it does everything the way, you know, ideally, this yeah. is the way that this is going to work. But... It's still not going to be as effective as uh, actually having the hardware to test. But if you're working on a shoestring budget, this is probably a good alternative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and the the other thing, too, is it lets you uh, just verify, hey, I'm using these such and such calls. Is this supported on these GPUs? Especially for uh, Intel stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the older Intel GPUs have some interesting Vulcan behavior. So if you want to support as many things as possible, hey, you have something you can put into an automated regression test suite to just make sure that when you make your Vulcan calls to the GPU, they will be answered in a way that you anticipate. And don't Maybe worry, kids. I, we we promised uh, DX12 is the 2018. You're DX12, bro. Yeah. Don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't worry yourself. But hey, man, uh, let's rewind back it up just a little bit and talk about what happened in 2017 was a knockdown kick. Z yeah, Zenotic. Uh, that yeah, shooter that yeah. the only pe other people playing it are people who just play Zenotic. Um, they have some statistics they posted on their website. Links to that in our show notes. Um, that looks like and porn. a couple interesting things, like the best time. <laughs> it does look like some sort of lit pixel that penis. I, I don't know, but it yeah. has it has some interesting data, like uh, the best time to look for a game because that seems to be about eight o'clock uh, UTC because that's when all the Brits are home and playing uh, their deathmatch in Xenotic. Uh, people people really, really, really like the motor gun, because that has the majority of uh, the damage being dealt, or the frags being uh, doled out. Nobody wants to use the lightning gun. And um, yeah, they had a community growth of 3,000 additional players in 2017. So good on them for that. It's an open source game. So... Uh, the, it's it's relatively small numbers, but it's big for games that you are essentially just giving away. And these guys have been at it for a while. We've been talking about them since like pretty much the beginning of Linux Gamecast. Oh, yeah, so. basically 100%. There there, is, you're right. Uh, a lot of people are playing that. And I, I was surprised just by the raw numbers. And the people still currently in it is... Did they ever get that on Steam or no? No, that I was think it Warsaw, was supposed it? to be on uh, Warsaw. Yeah, Warsaw is on Steam. Okay, and Alien Arena is on Steam, right? Yes, Alien, yes, Arena, Alien well. Arena is also um, on Steam. Like, and Zenotic was always that game that I looked at and I said, maybe I should try that sometime, and I never do. <laughs> but apparently they got 3,000 new players, so or 3,000 more players when compared to 2016, so that's something, and my, and, I guess. And m m most of the games are happening when you're off work, Pedro, so where's your excuse? Mm -hmm. You have none. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe you're too busy playing Fallout 2? I don't know. I, I don't know. There's, there's some engine work uh, being done on it. Yeah. Yes, there is. It's Foltergeist. Uh, I can't remember who it was on the Wednesday show that uh, brought this up on Discord, but... It's Foltergeist. It's still getting updated, and it got an update very recently. Version 0.3.1 uh, was released uh, yeah, 12 days ago on GitHub, and it's Fallout 2. It's uh, open source engine re-implementation for Fallout 2. And I tried it. It works. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be complete, because when you start the game, you are supposed to spawn just outside of your village... Uh, and you can only go into the Temple of Trials. Uh, that's like the tutorial, if you want to call it that, because they don't really tell you anything. They just put you in that thing, and they say, figure it out. That that was the tutorial you got back in 1998. And in this version with Foltergeist, you, are, you start, when you start a new game, you start in the Trapper Town in Klamath. So... It skips that entire bit there. Uh, it, 
you know, I would actually also like to have support for the Fallout 2 Restoration Project mod because that adds a lot of content that was cut from the final release game, but it was still in the game file, so... I can't remember his name, but it's definitely a thing. And, but I guess at the end of the day, hey, cool. the project is still alive. It's still getting updates. It might have a ways to go. But um, mm-hmm. Tux Snapback. Snap! Yeah, no, this is um, from Snapcraft IO. Uh, the um, Daniel from Super Tux Cart, who looks a little bit like my old boss, uh, Mr. Chris Tyler. Um, he, uh, has put, uh, snap on, or, uh, he put snap on super tux cart other way around, or maybe, maybe not, um, give some basic system requirements. They want people to give it a test. They want to make sure that network, multi- the network multiplayer is working with both snap and non snap peers. And they want to make sure that all the controller support is working. And apparently for the most part it is. Uh, so if you want to give that a bit of a whirl, you absolutely can. I mean, let's. Uh, I mean, let, let's be real. Snap, Snap is the future of gaming, right? So, oh yeah, man, uh, Snap I mean, is one hundred percent. It's just baked. All just stop work on everything else. Um, especially if you like extra loopback devices showing up in your um file manager, because that's a neat <laughs> feature that's still in Snap, and why I uninstalled it from my system because it was confusing me because I'm a simple person. But hey, go help them out, test it out, and um, yeah, the little Snap repo things. Kind of neat. It's still wicked confusing right now because that just is like another package manager. I'm nothing against Snap at all. Uh, it's just with uh, Canonical, Kubuntu. I mean, do we really need 16 different ways to install the same damn thing? J- j- just asking, man. Yes. Okay, fine. The answer is yes. Uh, open motherfucker. Uh, speaking of... Uh, yeah. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> Badass open motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, speaking of engine open re-implement or open engine re-implementations, this is open muff. Open muff. Um, that is a re-implementation of the game Mafia from 2002. Uh, they are supposedly taking inspiration from the people at Open Morwin, so you know they're crazy people. Uh, I remember seeing this game all over the place back in the day. I, I just boxes walking into like your EB or we. Which is what we call GameSpot. Well, I guess you had Electronic Boutique in the U.S. for a while before GameStop consumed it in your in its multi. Nom 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 nom. But nom nom nom. But um, it's still in progress. Um, they have uh, some screenshots of some of the environments. You need the original game to play this. Uh, and yeah, no, it's again. I, I scream this every time something like this comes up. Engine re-implementations are super good because game preservation is not a thing that developers care about. But it's something that fans care a lot about. And especially when uh, there are lots of compatibility issues with older games on the Windows, on the Linux. Uh, it's good to have something that is designed from the ground up. Well, that's definitely one of the reasons you'll never really hear me poo-poo on wine. Because wine is going... I mean, there, there's already instances of wine having better success rates of running windows applications than windows the with older yeah, stuff yeah. you know backwards compatibility and i mean that's but when you see engine re- implementations like this you're just like yay i'm happy mafia i remember mafia too oh ooh, this is the old one i um, never played it mm-hmm. i heard about it I, I knew it existed pedro but uh look at the screenshots it looks nice and all that but it doesn't look like something i'm going to waste time getting set up mm-hmm yeah, I did actually play a little bit of Mafia back in 2003-ish. Hey and uh, yeah, uh, I was playing, I think it was GTA 3 as well at the time. No, that, this was before GTA 3 came out. I can't, I'm can't. i getting all my dates mixed up. Maybe it was Mafia 2 that I played. I can't remember. But the big difference I saw between GTA 3 and Mafia was that uh, G- uh, G- uh, in Mafia, everything was... I was just going to say GTA 3 came out before Mafia. I'm going to fact check you on that. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was right. I was just confusing because Mafia and Mafia 2, it's like, yeah. But, yeah. Um, GTA 3, everything feels rather weightless. But the moment I went into Mafia, it's like the cars felt like they weighed a ton. Your character would barely start to move. I hope that if they actually do plan on recreating the uh, the classic, as they say, that they also go in and fix some of the uh, janky movement things. Uh, that would be very helpful. 
I think. Right. Well, the, and that's an interesting aspect about uh, game preservation. Do you want to preserve all the old funky bugs for the authentic experience? Well, you fucking have to, man. What, what are you, you talking about? Option? Because then you then the retrain mm -hmm. pulls out of the station. If you start fucking with the actual game, you better have the ability to cut that on and off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's beautiful. Get us the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, coming up next, it's an Earthsauce game review because, you know, it's we threw, we threw chairs instead of stars and we're throwing chairs at Earthsauce. <laughs> Hi, folks. Apparently, I don't actually know how to pronounce the name of this game. I've been calling it Earthsauce for like a week and a half, but apparently it's Ersatz and it's developed by Paris Stalker. Uh, it's developed on the Game Maker Studio engine. And you can pick it up for about 10 of your wet, stinky currency. What is it? Ersatz. Or er, Ersatz, yeah. is a speed-focused, hardcore action platformer with rhythmic elements featuring multiple genre original electronic soundtrack, which dynamically builds and changes based on your progression. The dev sent us some keys for that, so thanks a lot. And of course, this is the Chair QA session, where we take a look at some games and uh, tell, tell you guys what we think about them. Uh, and maybe perform a little QA that the developer should have done before actually charging money for the damn thing. And we rate them as follows. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that's awesome. And we apply them to our categories of doom. Mixed with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So um, I'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll start off mixed with the working on on the on the Fedora 26 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 980. Um, works. No, no, no issues. It's Game Maker Studio. My issues with the game come a lot later, but for now, four chairs. All right, over here on Humbuntu, 1710, um, 1700 AMD, Ryzen, all that business. Uh, does start out in a little itsy bitsy teeny weeny, um, postage stamp window that was kind of horrifying at UHD, but yeah. it, it full screened. Solid 60 at 3840 by 2160, as should be. Didn't try it and windowed. Um, I mean, I'm going to give you a little pro tip, Brad. You, you might be missing out on some sales because this thing is only listed for Windows Vista and above on your Steam store. So it's an instant no buy for Mac and Linux. Uh, but yeah, man, it launched, it ran, couldn't find any, anything wrong with it on the technical side. So yeah, I'll throw a four. Yeah, absolutely. It ran just fine. Much like Jordan, my issues... Well, we'll get to that, but uh, yeah, no, it runs just fine. The performance it held sixty, as far as I could tell, and it uh, on the Ryzen five sixteen hundred with the GTX ten eighty running on Ubuntu sixteen oh four. I can give it a solid four chairs. Hmm. Good to see. All right, well, that, that's the, yep. some four chairs for mix with the working. How about the shiny and the sounds? Uh, Pedro, why don't you take this one? Well, I've uh, I've mentioned this many times, but aesthetics in a video game should serve to complement the mechanics, not to hinder them. And Ursatz is another perfect example of a game in which the visuals are highly detrimental to your ability to play it. The backgrounds are made up of the same color scheme as the actual level. Uh, the character leaves ghosts of itself as it moves behind him, uh, which in the middle of boss fights becomes a crapshoot to figure out which of the semi-transparent splotches of pixels you're actually in control of. Uh, it encourages movement, uh, yet certain obstacles are damn near impossible to see while you're trying to just whoosh past the levels and the camera is going all over the place, but I'll get to that. And you're going, why am I not moving? Oh, that's a thing I need to break. Right. Okay, let's dash. Right. The music was all right, though. Uh, nothing to write home about, but at least I didn't feel the need to mute it. <laughs> okay, over here, man. Check it out. What do we got? We got hipsteratory pixels. That's what I'm calling it. Character blindness. It's a real deal. It's a thing, man. Really not a fan of the overall look. I do want to give it like an extra half gold star because it induces seizures. I can respect that. Um, not lazily done, but really not done to anything to impress me. The original soundtrack reads like a list of audible nope sandwiches to me. It's like um, house trance and all that shit, man. When I only listen to classical house wub, that's my jam. That's what I like to put in my ear pussies. Jordan. 
Couldn't tell if yeah, you were frozen, um, buddy. Character blindness. It's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, pay I'm paying attention to what you're saying. I'm being an active listener, as they call it. It throws no, me off um, when you do that. Yeah, they really like their... <laughs> yeah, so gotta gotta keep doing it then. Uh, yeah, they really really like their super saturated bright colors. Oh man, it literally the the boss fight coming up. If I'm not sure if we're gonna get to it, you'll see it if you're watching the video version of this. Literally, literally hurt my eyes. It took me so many attempts to actually accomplish it. I figured out what I needed to do. I just couldn't see what the hell was actually going on because my eyes were being assaulted by super bright light and white on white textures. It's just so racist. I, I it blinds me. It's blinding me with science. Um, yeah, the soundtrack is just kind of meh. I, I have no opinion on it one way or another. I kind of muted it though, just because you know needs some needs some appropriate mood music to hurt to not hurt my eyes because that's how I listen to things <laughs> with my eyes. I'll give it two chairs. I think the rest of you guys give it also <laughs> about in that space two chairs. So that's what we're going to give it. For the yep. shiny in the sounds. How about controls, Ven? What'd you think? Okay, I, I used the Areola controller, a Steamy controller. I gave it the business with that because I'm still using it. Thanks, Strider. I'm almost kind of likening it. So, ha, deal with that. Um, controls, what do you got? You got something that needs to be tightened up, man, because when I see hipsters, when I see pixels, man, I'm thinking SNES days, Genesis days even, a little bit. And I'm expecting those wicked tight, albeit sometimes a little flaky, but still, instant response, you know. Everything gets compared to Hollow Knight these days if you want the Pepsi standard for a modern game. And this, ladies and gentlemen, not Hollow Knight. It's not busted. Hell, you know, it's nicely laid out, especially on the Steamy controller. Everything worked like I would expect. Your slides, your jumps, and all that. Not a whole lot to this. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I can give it two chairs because it's serviceable. They work. They get the job done. They get you from to the left to the right. But there is room for improvement. Yeah, yeah, oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. The um, actual controls, yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, usually for uh, Jordan, you let me talk, Pedro. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yes, usually for precision platformers, I prefer the uh, DualShock 4 because it has it's Becky with the uh, with the nice D pad. Those are the face buttons. That's the D pad. There you go, camera. Uh, so that didn't work. I uh, D paired it as a Steam controller. Uh, that also did not work. Um, the just regular S. Xbox controller that I had actually smashed apart and reassembled thanks to trying to play Skyrim on PC with it um, worked perfectly fine. So that is serviceable. Um, although because I got to use that Xbox uh, D-pad, I was just sucking extra hard. Um, yeah, uh, that this this is just an issue that I'm tired of dealing with. Uh, guys, use SDL two, then things will work. Two chairs. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, the actual controls themselves are fine. Uh, it works just fine with a Steam controller. Uh, there's a minor niggle that it doesn't hide the mouse cursor. That's something I thought at this point in time every engine would let you do easily, but I guess not. Uh, the big thing here is the camera. Fuck this camera. Every time you dash, the camera sort of anticipates where you're going. It doesn't actually follow your character. It moves to where your character would be, assuming a successful dash. Problem is, when your character hits an enemy or one of the uh, damagey things in the level, it gets pushed back slightly. And the camera does this awkward jerk back to where your character is from where it landed originally. And it's disorienting, and it makes certain levels a bit of a crapshoot as to whether or not you can actually progress. There's actually a little bit of that in the uh, bit after I killed the boss. The next level onwards, I was stuck there for a while because of that stupid camera. That's two chairs. Yeah, so that's also two chairs for control. So to finally put a bow on all of this, did people have fun playing it? I don't know, Jordan. Did you? Mm. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, hyper precision speed focused platformers never really been my thing. I got with my old um, as a as a wheelchair as the as a wheelchair as a wheelchair. No, as a yes, child. I uh, <laughs> as, yeah as a, as a wheelchair. I was diagnosed by uh, with a medical condition. My old uh, piano teacher, Miss Mellinger, called stupid fingers. And as such, when it comes to performing super precise key combinations, I am not the greatest at it. Sliding around feels good and fast in the game, but they because it's your primary mode of attack, 
you have a limited number of stashes you can do, which really it's like, yeah, I like this. And then, oh no, I just slid into an enemy. Now I'm dead. Yay. Um, and on, honestly, my main gripes and what were the, and because this is a platformer game, it's where the entire damn thing falls apart is that the character blindness and lack of consequence for dying aside from like frustration and a reduced time 20 seconds doesn't ability. really encourage me to play this game <laughs> oh no I'm, i've got to measure my ep against people who spend all their days playing this game oh no i, I feel both so of terrible them. about myself it, it 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 hurts my pp yeah both of you, both of you guys exactly um yeah, that, that, that's the thing. <laughs> With all of these things, I just can't bring myself to care about this game. It it's it's not a type of genre that I enjoy. It's not particularly super well done. It's just kind of meh. Uh, I can't honestly give this a recommendation. What about you, Pedro? What do you think? Yeah, no, it is definitely trying to be a platformer with a focus on speed. But you just end up getting stuck in certain levels because the camera is all over the place and you can barely tell where your character is most of the time. Uh, so, yeah, it becomes so much easier to play if you just take your time. Just, you know, do things slowly. Oh, but then your score will be shit compared to your friends. That's implying I have friends or that I care about the score or this game for the for that matter. Because I don't. I really don't. It's annoying. It's visually insulting almost so yeah no i don't uh that's one chair for me mm -hmm. hey man i, I kind of struggled to put a full hour into this which i did i put almost two hours in it but you know 10 minutes in i was like yeah you know what i get it motherfucker you made a fuck you hard game i understand yeah. quit beating me over the head with it i'm just trying to figure out whether or not i like this game but look how hard and challenging it is it's a little over eager man it's like somebody should have gave this you know, gave a little hand job like right there at the beginning to so it'd calm the fuck down and let me play with it a little bit. Maybe maybe get a hug in, take it out to dinner. But no, mm -mm, it's not gonna happen. On top of that, you're racing against a fucking clock and you lose time for getting health. Fuck you. Um I like me some precision platformers. I like fuck you hard games, but not with the heaping side of bullshit twitch bait mechanics all up in this game. That never worked in the history of ever for it, like maybe two games. Quit. Um, all that said, you definitely don't have a bad game for something that was created by one person. But I'm tell you this: a little bit of a pro tip, man. Pro tip from somebody who's not a game developer, so you shouldn't listen to a fucking word I say. Uh, this kind of belongs on itch, or it belongs in your web zone in your portfolio, available for free. As like, hey, man, look, I'm working. And I'm capable of doing shit. Doesn't really belong on Steam, on sale. I mean, it's, it's not there yet, man. So we, we got one, two, three chairs, but that's only one apiece. Yeah. yeah, that's one chair for the fun. Tally all that nonsense up, and we get two chairs for the final score. It's a not sure if wants. I think I think we're gonna throw on like what's what's the opposite? Because the asteroid is usually the positive. What's the what's the opposite of that? Gary Busey. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely. Gary I'll Busey. give it gets two chairs <laughs> with a with a big old spoonful of Gary Busey. Got any final thought, thoughts, ladies, gentlemen, um, Pedros? Yeah, even at five eighty four, it's even if you like fuck you hard platformers, I'm just not feeling this. I don't know why. I wish I could give you a, a better explanation of just when you don't feel it with a game, you don't feel it. even games I don't like. Yeah, there's something there. This this feels like a flash game, man. Yeah, and it's uh, they the developer in the Steam page actually lists. Oh, the music is like uh, something with a beat. All the genres with a beat. I'm not a music person. Can you tell? So when I went into this game, I actually thought, oh, so kind of like a rhythm based platformer where you have to like line up what you're doing with the beat and the sounds that you know that kind of game i didn't get that i was disappointed and then the game it for itself it is it's a rage platformer yay like we don't ha already have shit tons of those uh, mm. all right uh let's get into a shit ton yeah, of no, hate I, mail I, baby I, go ahead what were we said I don't know. Oh yeah, and by shit, by I was just 
I was just going to say, man, that I agree with Pedro. I thought it was going to be one of those games where you actually have to pay attention to the soundtrack in order to, because that's like the clue to how to beat the game. No, that's 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 not what it is. I, I maybe would have gotten given it a little bit of credit if, if it was uh, one of those, but I guess it isn't. And by shit ton of hate mail, Mr. Benstone means one. You can check that out coming up next. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time to wrap this up. Yep, you've stuck with us long enough and we appreciate it. Chances are you have already clicked away and no matter what I say right now will ever be heard. Unless you are K Mr. KTW who sent us some hate mail, but we'll get to you in a moment. If you out there would like to get in touch with us, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click the contact button, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Just make sure LGC Weekly is the thing you want to, you know, select. Kind of lost my thread of thought there. But there are also other alternatives. If you'd like to ask Jordan about relationship advice, he's always willing to comply and look at him. That's the face you can trust. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to send some feedback to our Wednesday show, What We Do, that's Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, just Pick LWDW from the little drop down thing. And if you'd like to send us some keys for your game, make sure to include at least three or a build we can share among the three of us. Sound good? All right. So, what did KDW have to say this way? This, this week, way, man. This week. AMD Hearts. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, as I was just going to say, it says, Hi, I recently bought a Ryzen 7 for a new setup, and I got a free Quake Champions pack key with it. My question is, will the FSO deny me access to the Holy Beer Volcano, or will I get beaten by angry chairs if I attempt to run Bethesdaware under wine? I did very much enjoy the Dooms and the Quacks way back in the old days. Yeah, um, I think we're pretty much on a Quack. consensus here. Like, if it comes with a piece of hardware that you buy... It's not a heretic purchase. Like um, my, my copy of Witcher 3 is not a heretic purchase. Mm -hmm. It came with my 980. I didn't buy it for the copy of Witcher 3. Exactly. Kind of like along with that, that really comes down to you didn't have an... You, you paid for that game one way or the other. It's not like you could get a discount off the shit. It's not like a Windows license. And um, mm -hmm. no, man. I mean, if the 100% product is free, uh, you must have quit. It, no heretic purchase there. My 1700, my Ryzen, it came with a copy of whatever the hell it was. And I knew that Frenchy Strider, uh, that French Noyatron in Shot Realm. It's like, oh, so I want to play this little game. And I was like, here, take it. And he's like, oh, filthy heretic purchase. Le nom, gimme, gimme. And it actually countered against him because I just <laughs> made that rule up. Ha. <laughs> no, and, and anything Strider but buys is a heretic uh, purchase. If it's like lettuce mm -hmm. or like plastic garbage bags or something, it's just a heretic purchase. If you're just running Linux on top of that Ryzen 7, it's fine unless you're, you know, a filthy dual booting heathen, at which point everything you do counts as a heretic purchase, basically. Hmm. I don't know. I, I uh, mean... Especially, especially. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for showing up, because on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Keep sending us that feedback. We live off of it. Let's, let's get some of that next week. You can yep. find me at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets Plus Vin Stone, Google Plus, uh, Vin Stone on just Googles. Find me. It's sexy. Uh, I'm Jordan Swung. You can always find me on the Twitters or Google Pluses, clutching invisible evil grapefruits at the Burning Fool or plus Jordan Swung, respectively. So blurry. And you can find me wishing for a clutch because, man, I miss driving at Unaccounted for on Twitter, plus Burning Matos on Google Plus, or if you see me walking around town, stay away from me. Kick him in the balls! All the balls. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people. Smash cut. Well, I mean, you don't have to uh, right, which... uh, uh, run from them. <laughs> you, you but said, it's not fun if they scream at them. Go, That's my purse. You, I don't know you. <laughs> I, 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 quite honestly, I am looking forward to the day if I ever get like recognized as someone from Linux Gamecast in public, because then I'll just, like, grab them and start petting them and be like, shh, shh. Really? I didn't say for your own personal them. safety <laughs> that might be followed by somebody pulling out a firearm. You might want to book the fuck out of there, man. <laughs> yeah, just tail it. Nah, I, I've, I've, I've had a good run. Yeah. I've had a good run. <laughs> 
That is true, yeah. Ah, lovely, Thanks, lovely people. Wall. Oh, the fuck wall! Woohoo! <laughs> Somebody go spend two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah, my, my, Michael, Michael Gwensel's been dropping the Mad Duke hots. Uh, yep. shit. All right, that's it. Ten to five. What's, 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 the, what's the next big thing on the wish? Five dudes.